Aloha, and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We are a show that highlights successful individuals and their businesses, or in some cases, the organizations that they lead. Uh, we have heard about all the challenges in Hawaii, and we know that they are out there, uh, but there are a number of companies, there are many companies, that have actually found how to be successful, and this show highlights how they've done it. Uh, today, we've got two individuals that's gonna come in and share with us uh, an untapped resource that I think Hawaii could really benefit from if they could figure out a way to make it work. And these two individuals are going to help us uh, understand that a little bit more and, and hopefully put together a, a game plan to take advantage of this resource. Uh, and, and this is a mouthful, but they're co-founders of the Military Aloha State Transition and Economic Retention Council, uh, short, Master Council. I like that better. Uh, but we've got Chase and, and Greg here today. Um, welcome to the show, guys. It's good to have you here. Yeah, Thanks for having us. The invitation, yeah. right. uh, and just to kick this off and get it going, uh, Greg, can you kind of give us a little bit of uh, background on yourself and, and where you're at and where you came from and how did you get here? Yeah, absolutely, Reg. Uh, so originally I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, I grew up there, uh, raised, born, all that. Um, I moved to uh, Florida for school uh, where I met my wife, Stephanie Baldner. Um, from there, I uh, commissioned in the United States Army as an infantry officer. Um, I deployed twice since then, uh, once in 2011, once in 2013. And to some places that uh, are kind of like resort areas? <laughs> Absolutely. A beautiful desert resort known as Iraq and, uh, you know, mountain escape called uh, <laughs> Afghanistan. There you so. go. Okay. <laughs> so uh, after the, that experience, um, I transitioned into the world of um, uh, information technology for the military. I was a signal officer for two years, um, and then I moved out here eventually to Hawaii. Uh, as soon as I arrived out here in Hawaii, I realized that uh, it was just the place for me to be. Um, you know, my wife's family is from here originally, so uh, it was a very smooth transition. It's kind of like Florida, only better. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Better beaches. And, and better I can better. say that because <laughs> I grew up in St. Petersburg, Florida, which is right on the Gulf of Mexico there. Oh, right. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I. I kind of did the same thing. Military came out here uh, a little bit before you did in, in the early 70s and just decided to stay. Right. So uh, I did my tours in Vietnam. Um, and uh, Chase, what about you? Yeah, thanks again for having us, Reg, and thank you for your service. So I was born in Southern California and uh, followed my father's job and ended up graduating high school in Eagle, Idaho, wow. of all places. Mm -hmm. But um, I ended up, only place I applied was the Military Academy at West Point. And thank God I was accepted. Uh, I graduated there, but uh, met my wife, Samantha Capo, and better half, uh, my senior year. I was down at Fort Benning, Georgia, and went through all the um, infantry type schools. I'm actually a cavalry scout, and then uh, came and was stationed out at Schofield Barracks. Mm. And, oh, you know what? Um, I've I haven't had the chance to deploy to the Middle East, but um, I've been through the U.S. Army uh, Jungle Warfare School here, and then I've been on a Pacific Pathways training rotation, and I've been in uh, New Zealand for a few months, as well as the Big Island in numerous times. Uh, well, yeah. and both places could be good for training. Yes, sir, absolutely. Yeah. And so my wife actually works um, down at Medigold Dairy in uh, Honolulu, and so uh, you know what she struggled and part of the passion behind this is her finding a job and us going through the struggles But now that she's found a great home at Meta Gold and they've welcomed her with open arms uh, We're really excited to stay and make a make a home here Well, and that's that's what I was alluding to a little bit in the introduction is that there's an untapped resource that that we're really not taking full advantage of and and I think, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe, uh, Chase, you're still on active duty, uh, but, Craig, you're, you're out and you're now in the civilian employment. Yes. As of one month ago, I signed my DD-214, which is my exit paperwork, and now I'm officially a civilian. Very good. Congratulations, I think. But you've made the transition pretty well. Absolutely, yeah. Good, um, good, good, good. But you want to be able to share some of that experience and help others do the same. Right, so uh, the, the transition process as it stands right now uh, is definitely catered to give you as many resources as possible right up front. Um, you know, the current transition process is known as the Transition Assistance Program. Uh, it provides uh, resources from uh, resume writing all the way to uh, financial resources to help you make the transition to the civilian life. So I attended that as well as a uh, entrepreneur course called Boots to Business. Um, yep, both it's those SBA program. Yes, absolutely, and uh, it's a great program. Uh, it definitely gives you some resources out there. Uh, one thing I noticed during the transition process, though, is that there's one key element missing, and that's um, state-specific transition services. 
Uh, so, uh, you know, kind of trying to stay out here in Hawaii was a bit of a was a bit of a challenge. There's several barriers in the way, and I think Chase will uh, later elaborate on some of those. But um, you know, after I after I made some of those hurdles and I found my way through the uh, the jungle of resources, I was able to uh, successfully transition. But you know, I saw that some of my uh, brothers and sisters in arms didn't have the same experience. Uh, so that's where we came to uh, our concept for Master Console, uh, which is going to try to help refine that resource. And didn't you have an experience with uh, maybe a headhunter, a recruiter, giving you some advice? I did, actually. Um, I worked with the top four headhunters in, uh, in the country, and every single one of them told me that there was no possibility to transition successfully here in Hawaii. In Hawaii. Mm -hmm. and, and just to, to clarify to make sure that the audience is on the same page, the transition that we're talking about is going from active duty... Uh, service into the civilian workforce and th th there is a transition that has to take place you know there's a different mindset that people have to get comfortable with uh, and you know providing a bridge or support to make that happen is something that you would think that the military would be very good at unfortunately some places are and some places aren't um, and there's probably room for improvement for that service here well yeah the transition assistance program reg is really geared to set uh, the service member transitioning up for success in their HOMA record, wherever they um, first joined the military. And not a lot of folks, about 66%, want to go somewhere else. And so if any uh, service member or their family wants to make a home here in Hawaii, the, 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 s the lessons aren't structured to make them successful necessarily here all the time. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that's a missed opportunity, I, I think. Um, but Chase, you're you're actually still on active duty, but you're going to be transitioning yourself here soon? Yes, sir. Right. So I am a full 40 hours a week working for the United States Army, and uh, they've got me employed uh, to, to the fullest extent there. Um, in the early morning hours or on the weekends, I'm uh, working with Craig to advance uh, our nonprofit. And then what really got me passionate to find some of the business opportunities here in Hawaii uh, was that I, I'm a partner and a member of Patriotic Online Marketplace. Uh, we call it pompusa.org. It's a military um, a website, peer-to-peer -peer marketplace, where service members, veterans, or their families can go on and sell their goods, services, and products. And, uh, and so as we're looking to start that business here in Hawaii and headquartered here with all the wonderful resources like Blue Startups and Dev League here that have been encouraging this, um, I started to dig into some of the business resources available to veterans mm -hmm. or transitioning members here in Hawaii, and that's what we found is the missing link, doing it here. Well, and there are a lot of resources, but they're spread all over, and there's no one yeah. specific place like a clearinghouse that can help you sort through where all these different options and where they are and how to tap into them. That's exactly right. Everyone has a specialty and very uh, well-intentioned individuals that are providing services but no one is a, uh, a, a specific reference to say, hey, I know exactly mm -hmm. who you need to talk to for your need. And that's, that's kind of the role that you want to be able to serve at some point. Yeah, that's right. Very good. Um, and how far away are you from making that jump? Are yeah, you right. So uh, my paperwork, well, I will officially be out of the Army at the uh, end of the summer here. Um, so until then, um, getting pulled in two or three different yeah, directions. Well, it's tough. But yeah. You know, and you, you mentioned something that I think a lot of people seem to, to miss or maybe are not aware of, but it's not just the active duty personnel. It's also the spouses and in some cases the children. I mean, there's a huge resource there. Uh, and, and the state of Hawaii right now is running a 3% unemployment, which means they're, they're screaming for people. They're looking right. for people to come in and to work. And you've got the active duty, but you also have the spouses and the children. And so there's a huge resource out there that people can, can go to. Yes, sir. Uh, widely known statistic that uh, military spouses are one of the highest uh, labor under utilization rates in the country. And many on po uh, base and other military installations, they have some college courses or four or eight year degrees. And then plugging those uh, folks into the healthcare industry or the education industry, yeah. particularly in Hawaii, is a big supply that has not yet a huge demand. Well, and that was something that, that we had a chance to, to chat a little bit with Senator Green about, uh, is the, the educational and health care you know, opportunities that would be out there. I mean, both areas are 
screaming for qualified people. I mean, it's, I've been in Hawaii since 1973, and we've always seemed to have a shortage of teachers. You know, yeah. we're always recruiting a huge turnover. You know, one of the arguments is always, well, you know, military or, or military families, they're only here for a few years and they're gone. That's no different than what they're already experiencing. Right. And one thing that we're missing, too, another statistic, is that we do have a lot of veterans that are on the island or people that were associated with the military at one point or another. Uh, all said and told, we have roughly about 120,000 people that have been affiliated with the military that remain on island here, uh, whether it be active duty or have previously retired. So you're talking, um, you know, just a little bit over 15% uh, of the island is actually militarily affiliated. And that's a, that's a great population right there with, um, you know, excellent skills that the military has taught them and, right. you know, sent them out to the civilian workforce, workforce with. You know, and I think if we, were figure, if we were able to figure out a way to tap into that, we could solve a lot of our, our challenges here in Hawaii that for teachers and for health care providers and, and support and, and maybe even some other areas. But we need to take a short break here. Um, uh, we're going to be back in about 60 seconds. Uh, this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Uh, we're here talking about the Ma Master Council, which uh, could be a part of the solution of finding qualified teachers and healthcare workers and other skilled laborers here in Hawaii. So we'll be back in about 60 seconds. Hello, this is Martin Despang. I want to get you get excited about my new show, which is Humane Architecture for Hawaii and Beyond. We're going to broadcast on Tuesdays, 5 p.m. here on uh, Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha, I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland, here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 3 p.m. We address issues of importance for those of us who live here on the most isolated landmass on the planet, please come join me Fridays at 3 p.m. Mahalo. Aloha, my name is Richard Emery, host of Condo Insider. More than a third of Hawaii's population live in some form of association. And our show is all about educating board members and owners about their responsibilities and obligations and providing solutions for a great association. You can watch me live on Thursdays 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. each week. Aloha. Aloha, and welcome back to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Today we're talking with the two co-founders of the Master Council, which helps military and civilian uh, businesses tap into the resources that are available and help solve some of our, our skilled labor challenges that we have here in Hawaii. Uh, it's a brand new organization. It's still in developmental stages. Uh, we're looking for people that might be interested in participating, particularly employers. If there's any employers out there that are, are having a hard time finding skilled labor, uh, please reach out to either Chase or to Craig, and, and they'll be able to uh, do some matchmaking and, and help you solve that problem. But uh, let's get back to you know our discussions here. Uh, there, there's a couple areas that are specific that uh, you know there's some skills available that can certainly help Hawaii, and, and one of those is technology. Yeah, so the, uh, the tech world in Hawaii uh, is starting to grow a bit. Uh, a lot of the companies that we're working with are the service providers. Um, they're tech-focused, and uh, they're looking to hire um, you know, uh, either military or civilian um, IT experts like that uh, you know, can really augment their systems or you know, bring new business to Hawaii. Uh, so uh, one of the things that we want to do is start to put a lot of, you know, a lot of focus towards that, um, start matching the IT experts like with these companies uh, that are starving for talent. Um, you know, we've heard it said that you know they want to create the next Palo Alto here in Hawaii, which that would be, would be nice if we could do it. It would be. It's a lofty, uh, lofty um, you know goal, but I think it's something that is achievable in time. And uh, you know, the military sure as hell can uh, put some uh, back behind Absolutely. that. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, if we can just get halfway there, we're, we're going to be doing good. Right. You know, it's, it's be great. All right. Very, and so. How, how would it work? I mean, if, uh, if we wanted to create a, a Palo Alto here and, and get some of the, the skilled labor to, to stay and be focused, um, does a company, how do they get in touch with you to be able to start, you know, finding out about these uh, resources? Right. So uh, we've been uh, campaigning here in Hawaii for a while now, uh, speaking with different uh, organizations. Um, you know, we can, uh, we can be reached at any time. I think at the end we'll uh, provide our information. But um, you know, uh, if they uh, if they want to get actively involved, uh, they have to uh, just reach out to us. Um, we can put them on the service provider list, and um, you know, if they have a specific need for, you know, any type of talent, or if they want to help, uh, you know, do placement services, uh, we have those resources readily available. Um, 
So uh, one thing that uh, our company is focusing on, I do want to bring up, is that we have a program called INVEST, which is the Integrated State uh, Veteran State Transition Program. Uh, that's going to help uh, these service members transition successfully from, um, you know, from their military service. Uh, this program is in uh, no competition with the current uh, transition assistance program. I'll make that a uh, disclaimer. Uh, but what we are trying to do, though, is uh, augment those services to try to help retain uh, these soldiers in state, or sorry, service members in state. Um, you know, and uh, as they come through our invest program, these service providers are going to be able to see, you know, the type of talent that we're generating out of our program. Which would be impressive. Yeah, Chase. Absolutely. And one thing we fully recognize is um, all 8,500 odd service members that transition out of the military from Hawaii yearly, they're not well, all meant... Let, let's repeat that. 8,500 people transition out of the military every year in Hawaii. That's right. Yeah, and every year it's a plus or minus, wow. but that's where we can really kind of peg it down to. And we understand that um, not all of those are meant for Hawaii. Now, back on the mainland, those states have a, an average of 33% of uh, those, those service members that are transitioning out. Make so so, so if, if they have military within their yeah. state, 33% of them end up staying there? Right. And so for us, it would be, again, I think this last year, we were right in... Uh, uh, 2,650 service members at the national average would have stayed and made homes and uh, new lives here in Hawaii locally as civilians. Now, we're not saying we're going to be 33% on par with Texas or Tennessee or anything, but we can sure do a lot better than where we're at now. Which is where? Uh, yeah, between, 3 to 5%. Right. And so we're in the low single digits. Wow. And so the opportunity cost is, is enormous. See, that's, and that's the point I, I'm trying to make yeah. is that, you know, there is a huge untapped market there. I mean, if the country is at 30 plus percent yeah. and we're only at, at 5 percent, um, you know, we're really not taking advantage of the opportunity that's presented. There's a lot of yeah, lost right. opportunity costs. And um, Chase, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. the numbers are uh, yep. somewhere around a billion over five years. Absolutely. So we've been extraordinarily conservative in our calculations and economic models, but for every veteran retained, and that's one new metric we're trying to get the state as well as businesses to pay attention to, uh, veteran retention. For every veteran retained, uh, you can expect anywhere between $9,500 and um, $1,100 $1 in tax revenue mm, mm. Uh, just for that one person or family, so it's averaged annually. Total economic impact, though, from all the dollars that they earn and spend and all those dollars are created, We've pegged it down very conservatively to $144,000 per veteran per year. So state revenue and total commerce in the state just climbs exponentially the more veterans uh, are, right. are hang back here. And, you know, I think it's important for everybody to realize that when we talk about veterans, we're talking about not just people that carry a weapon and pull the trigger. I mean, there's a lot of support groups that, that support those guys yeah. that, that have some very highly skilled uh, capabilities. Absolutely. Well, one of the, um, one of the service members that approached us uh, when we were getting our initial push out there, you know, was a 16-year uh, logistics officer, a guy who retired as a major, hadn't found work in one year. Um, and, you know, with the amount of resources that are out there, you know, these things shouldn't be happening. We should have, um, you know, some sort of program like that, you know, helps them find the right resources if they want to stay here and stay. Well, a logistics officer of, of that rank would, would probably have a significant amount of responsibility for moving and making sure that things get from point A to point B when they're supposed yeah. to. So, you know, it's, it's a huge undertaking. It's a big job. And it takes a, a lot of training to be able to get to that point. Absolutely. You know, they're moving uh, roughly $100 uh, million dollars, like, worth of equipment plus every year. You know, I think there's plenty of companies out there that, you know, could use somebody of that caliber. Yeah, Reg, our stories abound. So to select two is really unfavorable to really what's out there. But there are many lower enlisted soldiers who join the Army or the Navy, whatever it might be, just for American citizenship. Many times they already have degrees. And so with their post-9-11 mm -hmm. GI Bill, they're looking for a university to go get their master's and a few that we've spoken with in computer science. And they're choosing between UCLA or uh, somewhere along the West Coast because this is really the first place they were stationed. But why not UH? Why not uh, HPU? And so we're really trying to link people together for the betterment of Hawaii and those transitioning uh, members. Now, do some of these other universities have of veteran affairs offices that are, you know, maybe part of the administration or part of the campus to help people, you know, veterans with this transition. 
Uh, and if there are, do we have one here? Yeah, there are a few, right? I just, we believe that they don't understand the magnitude of opportunity, especially with uh, the surge uh, service members that are starting to transition out. Um, they've got veteran groups for the students, but uh, you can just see in the numbers of between three and five percent retention, mm -hmm. they're really not actively marketing the way they could be on the military installations or on local news, whatever it might be. So uh, what I'm seeing is opportunity for the state to get some of the skilled labor that they're looking for, uh, not necessarily have to bring it in from the mainland, which can be quite expensive. Right. It's already here. Uh, they've already been here for a number of years, so they're comfortable with the environment. They want to stay here. Uh, it's not like bringing somebody in from Montana who's never been here before and, and trying to get them comfortable. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of inherent reasons to, to focus on this area. But then you also have the, 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 the children and even some of the, the service members themselves that want to go to the university and, and maybe even work at the same time and, and like most people do. That's right. Um, so the universities can benefit, the community benefits, the, the business community benefits. I mean, I, I see this as a win-win all the way around. Right now, I, it feels and it, by the numbers are very much indicate the state of Hawaii is drinking through a garden hose of federal funds that follow service members rather than a fire hydrant of active and transitioning, talented uh, members and families. Well, the GI Bill being one of them, right? I mean, that, that would provide a lot of funding to do the, the, at least the educational piece. Just in 36 months, someone who takes it from the beginning to the end, uh, the all-day cost is about $112,000 of federal money into the state system. Per and student? Per student, that's right. And that doesn't include whether they're in the National Guard or reserves or working part-time. So 10 students, you're talking about a million dollars. That's right. You know, that would be a nice little pop in tuition for uh, the university. And, and maybe they wouldn't have to have so much tuition increases after that if they yeah. get more students <laughs> right. coming in. You know? You know, no, there's just an awful lot. Now, if there are, again, people who want to get involved, I, I know you, you're still in the formative stages of the organization. Um, you know, you've got the mission. You've been talking to a lot of people, doing the networking. Um, how soon do you think you'll have a website up and running that people can go to and start registering? In the next uh, three months, uh, our company is going to be 100% complete. We're going to be ready and operational. Uh, right now, we're kind of operating um, a little bit uh, with a shell of our full capability. But in time, as we gain more support, we think that um, yeah, probably by about March, we'll be 100% efficient. We're learning a lot about the businesses we set this up. Um, it's because a lot of our energies are helping uh, either unemployed or transitioning veterans. So do we try to find them jobs and talk to HR directors? Or are we working on setting ourselves up for longevity? So it's, mm -hmm. it's exciting. Well, and you've got organizations that's kind of stepping up and wanting to help out and get involved, Amen. don't you? Absolutely, yeah. Um, you know, like as you mentioned earlier, we have uh, Senator Josh Green uh, who expressed interest in our program. Uh, same thing with uh, Tom Lee from the military liaison, um, uh, I guess, part of the governor's office. Um, oh, yeah, there's many more. So Representative Tokioka and Ito in the Military yeah. Affairs Council in the House, uh, State House, uh, Medical Dairy, they've all stepped up to say, hey, listen, send us military resumes and we'll get them plugged into some of the uh, needed opportunities. Civically, the Navy League has been mm -hmm. extraordinary offering space and some of their free classes and tours of the island. Um, and we really couldn't have done anything without the uh, Chamber of Commerce or the uh, Military Affairs Council We've as well. really f been uh, blessed with a lot of graciousness of uh, the mentorship. Reg, yourself, helping us out. It's been extraordinary. Well, it's for a good cause, and I think it's it's a good cause not only for our veterans and their families, but also for the community. I think that, you know, if we can just get comfortable, uh, you know, in in on both sides to get orientated and and to be able to, you know, go out and, and give them a shot, take a look at the resumes, and, and and have them come in for an interview and and go through the process. I think a lot of people would be very surprised at how qualified, and and how trainable. I think a lot of the uh, the, the, the families and the, the veterans are. You know, they're, they've proven themselves to be able to learn new skills, and that doesn't stop when they leave. You know, when they go into the, the workforce uh, with the, the, in the community, uh, they can still learn. They, they've got that capability. That's right, Reg, and we understand that there are some obstacles, right? Leaving a very uh, niche culture as the military and coming into one that um, is uh, markedly different from what's on Kaneohe or Schofield, 
But we've got a lot of countermeasures. Right now we're building a big database, and we're calling it the Hanai Network, of uh, informal adoption, whether they're a Hawaiian veteran or just veteran-friendly, of uh, folks bringing in uh, single soldiers or families so they're sharing meals over the holidays or they know somewhere to go um, on the weekends that's not uh, their buddy's barracks room. So we've got that going and I think one of the things I'm most passionate about, Reg, is getting these transitioning members integrated into the civic organizations that are here on the island. Mm -hmm. Craig's joined the VFW, I've done American Legion, we're both joining Rotary, to name three. Mm -hmm. Well, you're also a member of the chamber. Uh, yeah, a member of the chamber. Member of the yeah. chamber, fellowships with the MAC, and uh, that's what we feel uh, there's a huge amount of opportunity as well, getting folks that are in our generation, and we're connected and isolated at the same time with our cell phones, but you know what, uh, there's, that's the big potential, getting us involved yeah, civically. The, the more that we get involved, uh, you know, the more those hurdles will start to break and that's those right. barriers uh, to uh, getting employed out here in Hawaii. No, and I think there's a, a whole different type of attitude these days about, you know, appreciating what the veterans have done and, you know, trying to help them out as much as they can. I think this mentoring uh, process sounds very exciting. I think there's a, a lot of organizations that are stepping up and wanting to be engaged. Um, I'm excited about, you know, completing the process and, and getting, you know, um, the mechanics or the logistics, if you will, and, and you know, working so that we can start showing some some real results from this because it's something that I think we really need to move forward with in 2017. So, Sorry. all right. Well, any um any final words? We're about ready to wrap up here in the next uh, 60 seconds. Well, I just wanted to thank everyone like that's uh, helped us out thus far. Um, you know, we couldn't have done it without anyone's support uh, that's already pledged. Um, you know, I uh, wanted to thank my partner over here as well uh, for being uh, dedicated to the job. And uh, Reg, we want to thank you too for your support and guidance. Absolutely. Thanking our spouses, Stephanie and Samantha, for our, our late nights working on this, <laughs> as well as um, all the transitioning veterans and businesses that are interested in this opportunity. Yeah, please reach out to us. We are we want to partner and we want to make uh, this community a little bit better. Absolutely. And if, if for any reason uh, any of our viewers are having some challenges finding either Craig or uh, Chase, uh, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be happy to make the introduction and, and pass it off and then you guys can carry on from there. Yes, sir. So, all right. Very good. I'm so glad that you guys could take your time out and, and come in and visit with us today. Uh, this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We air every Thursday from 2 to 2.30. Um, we look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, aloha.